After over two years of van life, there is only one country where we have felt unwelcome. They even called me the C word by a 60 year old lady. The locals are renowned for their disdain for camper vans and motorhomes due to the ever growing popularity of van life in Scotland. After being confronted in person and online by these angry locals, we nervously revisit and investigate why we are not welcome here. We are starting our day just south of the Scottish border in one of the most beautiful parts of England, in my opinion, and that is the Lake District. More specifically, Windermere Lake. Is that right? Windermere <laughs> Lake? <laughs> so how this works is that I do the research and then I drip feed Emma lines and information <laughs> as we go. So yeah, what about this I'm lake? like, where, where are we? It's England's biggest lake. This is the perfect stop off on the way to Scotland because although it looks small, the UK is surprisingly quite big. Yes. Like when you look where we are on the map right now in relation to the whole of the UK, we're like basically like halfway. Yeah, well it's very long, isn't it? Long, very long. and thin. There's a joke there that I'm not gonna make. Say it. No, absolutely not. Well, it doesn't apply to me. <laughs> small and stubby. <laughs> all over the lake and lots of little ferries that connect between all of them so we've jumped on a ferry and we're making our way to the north of the lake what's the name of the place i have no idea ambleside what is it i don't know <laughs> oh my god <laughs> i'm just quickly scrolling my phone <laughs> we've made it to ambleside and you know that there is so many good things to do here when number five on the list of things to do is a garden centre. <laughs> oh, so you know yeah. you're spoiled for choice of exciting, riveting. I mean, to be fair, I feel like all little villages like this are the same. They're there to eat, drink, and walk around and take in the nice scenery. Mm -hmm. That's basically it. We still had a long way to go to get to Scotland, so we hit the road, making our way up north. Hey, we made it. We're in Scotland. First time with no in Scotland. And there, you went to sleep in England and you woke up in Scotland. You right there, my laddie? <laughs> Don't listen to your dad. Pull your trousers up. That is terrible accent. <laughs> <laughs> pull, pull, pull your trousers up. Stop it. First word has got to be trousers now. <laughs> I'm already not feeling welcome here in Scotland. Oh, it's like I... they turn the temperature down the second you get in here. <laughs> is this your way of keeping us out? As it was late, we decided to stop at a service station along the route for the night. First night done, and we felt very welcomed here in Scotland, mainly because we had to pay £10 for the privilege of doing so. <laughs> <laughs> but we had probably the best showers that we've ever had in a service station. We recently talked about how good the truck stops are in the UK, and this is a great example of why they're so good. Okay, I really don't think it's that big a deal that we feel welcome at a service station, because obviously they have money to make. The real test is going to be how welcome are we going to be out in the beautiful Scottish countryside, which is what we're really here for, let's face it. Let's go! To Loch Lomond! A couple of hours later, we found ourselves in the village of Luss, on the shores of Loch Lomond. How cute are these little houses along here? I've not seen houses like this before, no. anywhere. They're quite unique. I wonder if that's a Loch Lomond thing, or if it's this region of Scotland thing. Either way, it's very, very cute. Loch Lomond is home to more than 39 islands, so we jumped on a boat tour to get a closer look. One of the islands here is surprisingly home to a bunch of wallabies native to Australia. What the hell are wallabies doing here? That's what I want to know. Well, thanks for asking, Emma, because <laughs> the reason is that Lady Aaron, the crazy old witch, <laughs> But apparently she's very she eccentric. Rich? No, no, she was probably lovely. Oh. Uh, she was just very eccentric, apparently. And she had a love for exotic animals, and that included bringing loads of wallabies on here. And they now still live here to this day. She is dubbed the world's fastest granny because she was racing. <laughs> oh, sorry, the world's fastest granny. She's been clocked at doing the highest speed for a woman on a speedboat randomly on Lake Windermere where we were yesterday. <laughs> I love it. I feel like she's one of those like hard old ladies that just doesn't give a sh what anyone else thinks and she's like breaking all the rules and going really fast and causing havoc on the lake. <laughs> 
She went 103 <laughs> miles an hour. That is mad. Having stayed in a service station for the first night, we really wanted to make sure our second night in Scotland was a more memorable one. The plan is to wild camp tonight, so we are on the lookout for a really great park-up spot. Luckily, Scotland is riddled with these incredible park-ups, so we are just currently on the hunt trying to find a good one for tonight. We use the app Park for Night to find our spots uh, and I'm filtering it by places that are surrounded by nature and we've got this one here right next to a lock but also it is right next to the main road. And it's pretty loud. It's very very loud. Yeah it's pretty though, really pretty and you can walk all the way down to the beach mm. down there. Unfortunately I think this one is going to be a no because it is too close to the road and we have had a bad experience with this in the past which we will tell you about in the next spot. We'd like to take a moment to talk to you about today's video sponsor, AG1. Are you banging on about AG1 again? Yes, I am. I love that stuff. <laughs> AG1 is a daily foundational nutrition supplement which supports whole body health. It is really easy to make and it tastes so good. All you have to do is mix one scoop of AG1 with eight to 10 ounces of cold water, shake it up and you're good to go. We also find that the travel packs are super convenient when we're on the road because one pack is equal to your daily scoop and they're really teeny tiny so they're really easy to slot in and take with you anywhere. One of the benefits that we have found from starting our day with AG1 is that it sort of sets the whole blueprint for the rest of the day and it really does help to motivate us to make better health choices as the day goes on. One of the main reasons I personally love AG1 is for gut health benefits and nutrient replenishment. We try to get as much variety in our diet as we possibly can, but it's not always so easy. So it is really nice to know that as long as we can squeeze in one scoop of AG1 each day, we at least have have our nutritional needs covered. If you fancy getting a head start on your health before the holidays, make sure to check out our link, which is down in the description. By using our link, you will get a free one year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2, as well as five free travel packs with your first purchase of AG1. Luckily, Scotland isn't short on beautiful secluded park ups if you go looking for them. We headed further away from civilization in search of the perfect spot with just a few obstacles in our path. Look at this place! Oh wow! Holy crap! Oh Scotland, you beauty. We have found our spot for the night and it's a bit of a stonker. We always say on this channel the camera never does justice to what we're seeing and this is another example of that. And I'm looking in the screen right now and that is not what I'm seeing there. This is as good as it gets. For me, this is what van life is all about. Getting into nature and finding these cool little spots which is just better than getting a hotel, at least to me. With something like this being free, there is always going to be people letting the side down. So as you can see here, we've got a fire pit, which I'm not sure if that's strictly legal or not. I don't really necessarily have an opinion about that. But what I do have an opinion about is taking a and leaving it there. <laughs> I think one of the arguments a lot of people have for the wild camping thing in Scotland is why do it? Instead, you could just stay in a campsite. And it's really hard to justify staying in a campsite when there's spots like this that you can come and stay in. Get you completely to yourself. The whole place to yourself and you're surrounded by nature. It's quiet, it's tranquil, peaceful, and it's free just to top it all off, which is really nice. Yeah, show me a campsite as good as this. <laughs> and I would pay to stay here. Like if this was 20 quid just to stay here on our own on this little plot, oh, yeah, I'd pay that. It just happens to be free. <laughs> is for monkey. Monkey. So let's have a chat. Why do we not feel welcome in Scotland? This is the only country we've had a problem in real life and online when it comes to van life. This is the only place that purposefully we have been woken up by locals beeping at us. Which is why we try and find places off the main road. Because here a lot of locals do not like camper vans. Absolutely not. For reasons like the poop that's outside. <laughs> 
I mean, that's a pretty valid reason, to be fair. At the end of the day, the problem is that there are a few bad eggs letting the side down for the rest of us. There have been reports of things like littering, parking in the passing places, emptying grey waste on the side of the road, sleeping in inappropriate places like graveyards, ignoring no sleeping signs, and just being generally bad drivers. So it should go without saying that show respect in the place that you are, clean up yourself and mm. leave no trace. Of course. But unfortunately not everyone does that. I think that along with the growing popularity of things like the NC500 route has just been the perfect cocktail to create so much havoc that the locals just end up hating all of us under one big umbrella. We've also been attacked online as we gave an interview a couple of years ago with a newspaper <sighs> explaining about the NC500 and why the locals don't like it, there is kind of an infamous Facebook group where the locals basically just hate on all van lifers that come through the area. Yeah, pretty much and anyone. <laughs> they posted about us and came at us. <laughs> They even called me the C word by a 60 year old lady. <laughs> but all jokes aside, it is particularly upsetting when we make such an effort to leave no trace, to be as respectful as possible, to support local businesses, to do all these things in the right way. We also completely understand why people would be so upset with these kind of horrific behaviours like we listed before, but it definitely isn't the majority of people that are doing that, it really is a few bad eggs. But as a community, I don't think the majority should necessarily ignore the minority in mm. this, and like, it is a real issue what is going on. And if you are one of those bad Bad eggs are leaving rubbish everywhere and giving the rest of us a bad name. Stop it! Stop it right now! I think a lot of the problem here stems from the interpretation of the law. So here in Scotland, they have the right to roam, which basically means that you get reasonable access to pretty much all of the land here as long as you're acting responsibly. And acting responsibly obviously is open for interpretation to an extent, but there are some rules. For example, leave no trace, no rubbish, no evidence of fire pits or poops outside. <laughs> <laughs> that is very much going against the right to roam policy. So van lifers have interpreted this rule as they can camp kind of wherever they like in their camper vans and this rule is kind of actually just for wild camping in terms of tents. Mm, camping in your vehicle is completely allowed and that sleeping in your vehicle is completely allowed but you do have to also follow the highway rules with that as well so not blocking things not staying on private property etc etc the list goes on basically showing common sense and not being an asshole so with all that in mind let's see how tonight goes <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. From a very beautiful spot in Scotland. Look at this view out the back window. I mean, the windows are a bit grubby, <laughs> but the view is nice. It's also very rainy today. Yeah, it's very drizzly. Very Scottish out there. <laughs> I think actually the weather in Scotland is one of the things that makes it so beautiful. There's something about the moody, misty, drizzly weather, which is actually really charming. Yeah, I think it kind of represents a Scottish person. <laughs> what? What <laughs> drizzly and wet? Grumpy. <laughs> Grumpy. <laughs> That's so mean. I We've mean, met so many nice Scottish people. I'm really joking, I love Scottish people. <laughs> <laughs> One of the big reasons Scotland means so much to us is actually it was on our first proper road trip around Scotland where everything changed in terms of where our life direction was going. On that trip we visited the Isle of Skye and it was on the Isle of Skye that we decided that we were going to have children. She's not saying that we started trying because that's where my mind would go. Oh. <laughs> well, that is just where we decided that we did want to have kids. Yeah. Over the next year, we would save money to be able to afford to feed him. <laughs> <laughs> in our minds, because we live in a nomadic lifestyle, we were like, okay, as long as we have X amount of money in the bank, we can do this because yeah. that's essentially like our little safety nest. And so, yeah, so Scotland means so much to us that even Noah's middle name is Sky after the Isle of Sky. And it is just somewhere that we just want to 
keep coming back to all of the time. And we have talked on the channel about moving to Portugal, but one of the other destinations that we are interested in exploring is Scotland as well for that reason. Oh, definitely. And this trip is so special because this is the first trip that we're coming back to Scotland with Noah. And last and time we were here, he was in my tummy and yeah. now he's here with us. Last thing to do before we head off is to have my morning van life poop. <laughs> Only joking, I save this for the local establishments. One of the things we love to do when staying in these types of park ups is to go and check out the local villages. And we always like to come especially for breakfast and coffee in the morning. A, because it makes it easier, and B, because we get to see these little places that we never would have come to otherwise. One of the complaints that people have about van lifers here in Scotland is that they are not contributing to the local community. So they're just coming here and just taking you know, coming with food that they've bought from home, they've got the fuel. I kind of personally think that this is an unfair criticism as I don't really think that people are just stocking up on food so they won't spend a penny in the area. We had found ourselves in the village of Killin and couldn't believe our luck. This is outrageously beautiful. <laughs> oh my goodness. Sometimes it feels like just the luck of the draw of what makes a place famous or not famous. Because I feel like this place is just like one social media post from, oh, no. <laughs> from being riddled with tourists and it's just absolutely breathtaking maybe it's just the autumn colors that maybe make it like something okay no nope, they have an incredible waterfall on a beautiful old bridge i don't think i've seen anything quite like this anywhere before but we have these rocks jutting out of the riverbed and then waterfalls all around i could just imagine salmon jumping upstream at the right time of year I love when you get a mix of human civilization with nature kind of symbiotically working together and at least somewhere like this just feels so natural and it kind of just feels like this is just a feature of the village. It feels like in the past they built stuff aesthetically of like a nice place for humans to live and feel creative and now in the world that we live in and the construction just doesn't feel the same. Or back in the day did something like that bridge look ugly to them? Having already stayed in a service station and a wild spot, for the sake of comparison, we thought we'd see what you get for your money at a paid campsite. So how much does it cost? £26. And yeah, they're really lovely and nice. <laughs> for that price, we got a hard standing pitch with nearby nature walks and the usual facilities. I'm gonna do something objectively pretty weird and bring you guys into the bathroom. Hello? <laughs> okay, luckily no one is in here, but the reason why is I wanted to show you what the <laughs> facilities look like. If you've ever seen these before, you know what those are, I hope. You know what that is. <laughs> and the showers are over here. And I would actually have to say that the service station that we stayed at the start of the video has better shower facilities. I think for the price, this place is perfectly fine. But the truth is, I'm probably not gonna remember this in a number of years time, but the spot we were at last night, I will remember. I, and I think like these trips are made up of those moments, right? Mm -hmm. Like those memories tend to be the ones that stand out amongst the rest. Although this is a really nice campsite, it's not like having your own secret little spot that you feel like you've discovered all for your own. Mm -hmm. uh, personally, I think these kind of campsites are really well suited to sort of caravans and big motorhomes, mm. but it's for these little like VW camper vans. Like for us, I feel like this isn't the place to be. I think it's it's the same price for like a van for us. It's, it's the same price per pitch, yeah. right? So if you have a big rig, it's well worth it value for money wise. Yeah. Maybe it's not so worth it for a small one, especially for a van like this, which you can go off grid in. We're definitely not here to gatekeep your vacations. Absolutely. And I think sometimes a campsite could be like a hotel room. It might just be a bed to you. And then you can go off and have your memorable adventures. And this isn't that important for yeah. us. The part of the adventure is finding the place to stay. Yeah, it is fun, isn't it? Like not knowing what the place you're going to be staying that night is going to be like, where it's going to be. It's always a gamble, no. but then in turn it pays off. Yeah, it's a bit of a lottery and sometimes you'll be sleeping in a Walmart car park <laughs> and sometimes you'll be sleeping under the stars in an absolute stonking place. 
We would love to know what you guys think and what you would prefer to do yourselves. Would you prefer searching for a wild camp spot, which may or may not pay off, or would you prefer the security of knowing you have all the amenities that you need at a campsite? And have you been to Scotland and do you love it as much as we do? And if you don't, and if you've not been to Scotland before, get your butts here. Get your butts here, you <laughs> won't regret it. Just make sure you clean up after yourself. Yes, if you like the video, don't forget to hit the big fat thumbs up button and don't forget to hit subscribe for future content. Check the description for a G1 if you're interested and nothing left to say but thank you so much for watching we'll see you next time and beans out. <laughs> <laughs>